I'm like, it's not what I expected, but okay. And then I respect, but the thing is, is afterwards, I'm like, does Sean always go that hard to everybody else? And they're like, Sean always goes hard. You know, because like, that was the first time I ever went with Sean. So I was like, Sean goes hard. But, yeah. a li- but I respect it because before we sparred, he goes, I go, I'm going to go hard. I thought he was being very sarcastic, but he wasn't. <laughs> Welcome back to the Schmo Zone. This is episode number 91. I'm Dave Schmolenson, a.k.a. The Schmo. My co-host is... Helen E. with Helen E. Sports. And today's guest is an OG of the fight game. He is a heavyweight. He's born and raised here in Las Vegas. Big country, Roy Nelson. Thanks for joining us today. I appreciate you having me. Of course, man. I, I love that you're always decked out in big country. You got to be one, I of, know. <laughs> one of the first guys, one of the first fighters to really get involved behind the scenes with, you know, building your brand, especially at heavyweight. I, I think it was, I mean, when you watch enough professional wrestling, you kind of go, oh, that's what I need to do. Okay, got it. Who's your relate. favorite professional wrestler? I'm I'm old school, so it, it would be like Hulk Hogan, I mean, or Andre the Giant. Like, I'm old, old. I mean, uh, actually, I'm old, old, too. <laughs> and they run a lot of those, like, wrestling schools here in Las Vegas, too, so I'm sure you've kind of bumped shoulders with those guys over the years. Uh, yeah, no, um, wait, like, um... What's Gina's last name? I think you. Karana? No. Um, she she used to fight in the uh, UFC, uh, the UFC. Gina and her brother. Do you know who I'm talking about? Gina. Um, yeah. Uh, it's, Mazzani. It's talking, Mazzani. There you go. Okay, I was, I was yeah. like, it starts with the M. It's a yeah. weird. It's a weird one. But like, um, they do a lot of professional wrestling. Oh. A lot of weird stuff. Like at Sam's Town, I was like, oh, that's great, cool. They take a beating too. They get their bumps. Obviously, it's different, but they have to be performing I, all the I time. I want to say, I want to say, uh, professional wrestling is a lot harder mm. because you know the bumps coming. It's like you already know the car wrecks coming, so you just like, and then you're just beating yourself into a hammer. And you have to go through those injuries because you have to be in a different city, a different week, different day. Besides that part, it's the like. I mean, I know a lot of everybody else, like you know hip replacements like and i'm like aren't you not under 40 yeah and you already got hip replacements you know and that's from just taking bumps right well ben Askren, he had a hip replacement and then he went and boxed jake paul that didn't go his way true but he, he, he wasn't supposed to box so right <laughs> set up a whole chain reaction of other things to happen too for sure but yeah. big country man we, we really appreciate having you in here in the studio um you know i just figured it's a perfect week we got ufc 270 coming up you got a teammate francis Nganu fighting a former teammate of his and cyril Ghosn. i mean it's the interim guy versus the real guy at the heavyweight championship i mean here we go first of the year first ufc pay-per-view event of the year yeah no i think it's a um it's a great, you know, it's good to see, you know, heavyweights because there hasn't been like, I mean, name, right now it's like name, name the top 10 heavyweights. And you're like, eh, those are all the old guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so you can't like um, go out there and name them. Um, so that, that's why it's kind of, it's fun to watch. Um, it's going to be fun to watch Francis and uh, it's real because I think they're the, you know, right now they're the top guys. Anything different about this fight camp versus when you just fought Stipe, which, by the way, common opponent for you because you fought everybody, but <laughs> anything a little different that you've noticed this time around being around him than other fights? Uh, I think the biggest thing is just he just hurt more of his toys. That's about it. <laughs> like, you know, he brought, got a lot of guys in and, and, and sent a lot of guys back packing. So that's about it. What about mentally? Because like David just mentioned, this is a former teammate of his. And I know kind of at least in the media out there, they're painting a photo at least of like Francis versus Cyril, even though it's really Cyril's coach that's kind of, you know, doing the talking. Francis is mm-hmm. old coach. So what do you think of how he where he's at mentally going into this fight? I think he's 
I think better than a lot of all of his other fights, just because like he already know, like usually if you've already um you fought your you know a teammate, you kind of already know who's the the better guy out of the two. You know what I mean? Or we're like, oh, you know what? It's gonna be a tough one, so I get pre- you know prepared really well. Or it, but if it's um, a coach, it the only time the coaches that makes a difference is if he was like a like a strong mentor. You know what I mean? And then that 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 one I don't I don't know, so I don't know if it's like a like a Gus Mato with like Mike Tyson. You know what I mean? Because it would be like, no, no, he mess with you. You know what I mean? But then there's some that like it's just coaches. Like it's not a unless they're you know doing kung fu and you know like it's my sifu. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like doing some magic chi stuff. And obviously, one of the huge storylines too coming into this fight is that this is potentially Francis's last fight in the UFC. Just um, I, if he wins, I think the championship clause kicks in where he gets offered three fights in the year under the same contract. But if he loses, then he's a free agent. It's an interesting scenario, I guess, for your heavyweight champion of the organization. And, well, it's one of those uh, like the championship clauses automatically like. You, you, we're never going to get rid of a championship because uh, I think that clause was actually put in there because of BJ Penn way back when. Way, 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 way. Um, so I think, uh, so it, it, it's definitely interesting. So it's, you're like, from a fighting standpoint, do you, you know, you're like, I, I, I need to finish my, my thing and then go, oh, we got to renegotiate. But then they're like, no, it just automatically, it already renegotiated in the contract. So it's that it's, it's very a very tough one. Yeah, and I think I just saw too a report earlier that half of his payments coming in uh, crypto and Bitcoin. He's going to translate it too, so he's investing it into himself. This is the day and age we live in, man. Twenty twenty two, get paid Digital. in Bitcoin. He he shouldn't he shouldn't do Bitcoin right now because it's going down. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know? What do you know that we don't know? What no? It's just just if you just look at the charts, crypto and it's tied with the stock market. Stock market's going to crap. Mm. <laughs> it seems like more and more fighters now are being a bit more vocal in, you know, their stance and being just kind of more open-minded in terms of, you know, wanting to sign with other organizations, not always the UFC. Like, what do you think of? Um, I think the UFC still is the brand that everybody wants to be. Um, I think once you've already kind of, you know, I guess paid your dues or kind of been around the the business for a minute. You learn that you are the product, if because we're selling fights and you just want to see me fight, not watch other people fight. Because <laughs> if that was the case, then everybody from the regional would be making the same money as you know the other guys. Um, but it's it, it it takes a minute for everybody to kind of realize what you know what they're worth. And then sometimes there's guys that think they're worth more than what they're actually worth. And then there's some guys that are like, I know I'm worth a lot more because you can go, you know, like I think Francis is in a, um, what, a new, the new Jackass movie coming up, you know, like, so he's, you know, so he's like doing, you know, different things that that's outside of the element of getting paid just for fighting, you know, right. and, that, and that's where a lot of other fighters, if you learn how to get paid outside of fighting, then you can monetize your your actual brand, where a lot of fighters have no don't care about that. They just want to get paid to fight. So that's where they kind of get, you know, SOL'd where you kind of get. So at what point in your career did you kind of realize what your brand was and that hey, I can build a brand out of this myself because you know. I watch your fights and you're one of a kind. You're one of those guys who's always moved great for the heavyweight division and always branded yourself in such a unique way. I feel like you were ahead of the curve. Um, it was actually, I think, when I won the my first belt in the, with the IFL. That was uh, with the belly rub. That's That that was, the I think, the turning point of because I was like, well, what can I do? Let's be like, you know, Hulk Hogan going like this or, you know. Just trying to f- figure out what, how can I have my, you know, like my own little stick type thing because I can't be, make myself six foot six and, you know, unless I, you know, chop my bones or, you know, do, so- <laughs> do, do something or um, or get on the juice and then, you know, then get really swole. But uh, those, so it's just something that, um, but with the IFL was the time that I really, I think, made the big switch. For like branding and then that's a whole like kind of how the mullet and 
going to big country with the ultimate fighter, you know, just the whole, that whole stick. What's so impressive too is like, obviously you got the, you know, the bare belly, the dad bod and stuff. And you fought in an era where a lot of guys were on the juice and had those Hulk Hogan superhero like bodies and shit like that. And you always held your own. You always, you, I mean, you fought yep. the who's who and heavyweights, guys that people still talk about to this day, the Stipe Maochich, the Derek Lewis's, like you fought everybody. Yep. And to Crow Cop, Big Knock, I mean, literally everybody. Um, I think I think the only person I, I, I just need a Fedor. I haven't fought Fedor. Oh. Fedor is my only one on my on my bucket list. And then if I if I beat, if I fought Fedor and beat Fedor, I'd be the only one that beat the three, the three uh, who's who, the Crow Cop, the Big Nog, and then Fedor. I got two of two of the three. So right now I'm okay. Well, are you still part of Bellator? Because that that was your last promotion in 2020. Was the last time you fought. The um, right now, like we're I'm in talks with Scott for the Fedor fight. Um, so if you know, fingers crossed. But that's yeah, not. We'll but that's it. not. That, but the, it's not up to me. That's up to Fedor. So did th- did they lock up that fight though? Was was it who was the person he was supposed to fight? It was Fedor. R- it's Ryan. It's it, he wants to fight Ryan Bader again. Yes. And Bader in in Russia. Right, so they but Ryan's fighting for the belt next weekend. Next yeah. weekend against so, the protege of, of so, yeah. Fedor, so yeah. that 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 was my last fight. I lost. I I lost the decision to the, uh, Madovsky, the the, the, ch- the champ. Yep, or the interim, interim. champ. Uh, so that so I think Ryan wants to uh, or Bader wants to or ugh, Fedor wants to fight him because Ryan knocked him out last. So that's like, from my understanding, that's who he really wants. But we'll see how things go. We were at that fight. That was in yeah. the California. That was at the Forum when mm-hmm. Bader knocked up. That Bader knocked out Fedor. See, you doing the same. <laughs> doing the You're same. You're like thing. Bader, oh, Ryan, <laughs> Fedor. <laughs> uh, that's interesting. That's a really uh, a fascinating opportunity for you if you that, get that. It, that. It's just that's just one of those you know bucket lists. Just throw it out in the universe. Yeah. If it comes back, it comes back. If not, it's you know it's all right. But in a perfect situation for you, if that fight were to happen, like when would you like to fight Fedor? Oh, I I think that would be more up to Fedor. So I wouldn't yeah. even, I wouldn't even care. It could be Christmas. <laughs> Anytime. Uh, yeah, it, yeah. That, that's how you know we've always rolled. But I think they want I think they want that fight in like uh, July or October. Okay. So I think summer that's, or fall, yeah. So are you kind of holding out for that, or if uh, are they presented other opponents? Have no, that to... that it's that. Well, see, you got that, and then you have uh, there's the triad stuff. You know, I talked to. I was going to ask you, know? you about triad combat. Yeah. What do you think of it? Uh, you know what? It's definitely interesting, but it uh, they want to say it's something different. All it is is boxing boxers with uh, MMA gloves. That's really all it is. It is. I mean, you could do more dirty boxing, but you still can't use it's just your elbows. It's just, bo- it's just boxing. It's just boxing. And it's a triangle. It's a really tight space. I, th- that's the only thing I do like. I like the f- I like the fact that there's three corners, and it's pretty much ready, fight, and you're already fighting. Like, there's no – you can't, like, kind of run around and, like, you know, like, make some room. You just make one step, you're already fighting. It's like fighting in a 20-foot cage – or the 25-foot cage, the, like, ultimate – The – Apex. The – Yes, the like tough enough or yep. the, like you know the the smaller cage versus the thirty foot cage. Well, have they ever approached you? Tried combat? I've talked to um, Ryan um, Kavanaugh. Kavanaugh, and so just trying to you know go that route, and then um, I know uh, Junior just signed with them. Yes, because he's fighting. Yeah. Um, so it's something that I'm definitely because one of my. Um, Bucket list is to do some type of boxing versus, you know, so I want to do that. And, and bare knuckles, not my, you know, it's not really my thing. Yeah. <laughs> Act that, that, I mean, that that stuff can get pretty messy pretty yeah. quickly. Yeah. Bare, bare, knuckle. Bare, bare, bare knuckle, I, I'm I just afraid I'll break my hands. Cause, that too. Because I've broken my hands in doing MMA, and that's with gloves. Right. And I think you know those triad combat gloves are closer to MMA gloves. Yeah, I, mean, so I think they're. I think they're. I think the, I call them uh, the puffies, like uh, what we do in MMA for sparring. Sparring, yeah. When we want to spar light. 
well, if there is such a thing with the <laughs> heavyweights. Yeah, we were there for the first triad combat yeah. in, in Dallas, and that was interesting because I believe the MMA, the team MMA, got the better of team boxing. More winners, more so points team awarded. Rampage team Rampage and Team Shannon is ahead Briggs. Of Shannon mm-hmm. Briggs. Yeah, because Shannon was supposed to have uh, was supposed to fight a uh, Rampage on his own card or something. So right was, back in December, and that's yeah. Uh, yeah, and that's what they're trying to to lean towards. They're trying to build up to that fight, which I really want to see because those guys are just going after it on social media. Yeah. It's so entertaining to watch it, the that, memes. The yeah, because Shannon puts a lot on. That's yeah. funny. No, it's uh, it's something that I find interesting. I, I it'd be great to see you uh, join that pool if that's yeah. No, the it's cards it's, it's definitely a, a interesting. It because I the reason why I like it is just it's boxing, it's boxing with smaller gloves, and I'm like oh, and and it forces you to like fight. Yeah, like there's no like running and hiding and you know. They had Metallica perform. It seems yeah, like they'll have musical performances involved with this too. So that was pretty fun. Because who's who's supposed to be on this uh, next card? I think it's like a the, like country it, singer. Is it Jason Aldean? I, Is that the, his name? I don't know off the top of my yeah. mind, but that could be possible. I think, I think it's a con- I think it's a concert with the. Yes, that's what it was. It was great seeing Metallica live. It was our first time seeing them live. So they're great. What was so cool is because they like opened up the card playing, and then they had fights. What? Then they played a couple more songs, and they had the main event, and then they did a full out concert at the end. Oh, that's cool. They teased the crowd in a baseball stadium. I think they played where the Texas. Uh, they performed where the Texas Rangers are. Oh, that's, that's what cool. It was. So it's good, and this this upcoming one's going to be in Houston. It's good though. What it's good to see that the sport, combat sports, evolving. You know, more opportunities for people to get paid. You know, because all you guys are independent contractors. You know, the more uh, eyeballs. Sure, are... sure it is. Sure, <laughs> independent. Can't fight over there. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, because you're under contract. Uh, well, it even if, if you're. A bo- you're with boxer promoter. You can right. still go box for another promoter. Right. You just have to kick. You just have to make sure you you just um, give some money back to the other promoter. Yeah, always different uh, hands in the pool, right? Uh-huh. Everybody got their hand out. Yeah, and it is Jason Aldi. See, you know your country music. See, you, oh, you know I, more I than I did. I just I just know that I just knew there was somebody that was playing. <laughs> <laughs> half concert, half fight. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I see you at all the different gyms. I think we're talking about this, whether this was rolling or not around Las Vegas. I mean, as a heavyweight, you get your work in anywhere. But in the past year, of all the guys you've come across, I mean, someone who you're probably not easily impressed, but who's kind of caught your eye and be like, shit, this person is uh, pretty damn good. That gave me some good work. It you for because it's so hard because like going with heavyweights, it's every I just kind of stick with who I know right now. Just because if you're like, like I hurt my shoulder, and um, actually riding a bike with my kid, my kid, you know, like so I've been like trying to ease him back, and then, um, but I only like to work with uh, certain, you know, certain guys, uh, but like working with um, like Tim Francis, you know, like just people that you kind of know, and like like I just told you about, you know, Sean. Like, I was like, oh yeah, you know, he's a one eighty five, you know, whatever. But I was just like trying to give him some work. Because he needed to work because he has a fight coming. You know, so I, was like, so I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll give you some work, whatever, you know. And then next day I know, getting, wow, whoa, 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 I thought we were going light. No, I told you I was going hard. <laughs> and then it, it was all, it was, but it was funny because I just thought he was being sarcastic, but it was funny, you know. For sure, for sure. So for the fans, if it wasn't rolling before you told us that story, and for the fans, so Sean Strickland spars hard but he lets you know ahead of time sean's i don't I don't know if he lets anybody else know but he was letting me know so i, I don't I, so i and i respected that because he's like i'm gonna go hard but i thought he was just being sarcastic but he went hard but it's some good courtesy for him to give you the warning and tell you ahead of time that, well i sometimes when people do that it's to make sure that i'm gonna go hard and then you have other like for me i had uh secondary thoughts of like well he's 185 or do i go hard do i not like you know what i mean versus if i was going with a heavyweight and he hits me hard i'm like oh we're going hard then you kind of go back you know hard where you know, somebody at a lighter weight you kind of go mm, do I? 
This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Bluemon. Everybody always asks me, what hair products do you use? I use Bluemon. I absolutely love using their fifth sample. And if you don't know what you like, they have a discovery kit with all of their different kinds. Right over here, they have nice size jars for you to sample them all, all for different textures and hairstyles. And I absolutely love their stuff. They have their cloud control. They have their volume cream. And uh, Helen always says my hair looks good at, uh, when I wear this stuff. Right, Helen? Oh, yeah. Your hair always looks great. I know you use some product today as well because you swear by this product. And even sometimes, like, you're always asking me, hey, can you uh, go get my bloom on stuff? Because you always need to make sure your hair is presentable and that it looks great. Easy to travel with too, but the most important thing I'd say about the product is it doesn't smell. It doesn't get sticky. So if you don't end up showering that night and you have it in your hair, you're not a complete mess the next morning when you end up go into the shower and try to get it out of your hair. So that's the most rewarding part about it. It sticks, it holds, I love it. Check it out, go to bluemon.com and use the promo code SHMO. You will get 10% off and you won't be disappointed. Check it out, bluemon.com, promo code SHMO. And now, let's get back to the show. Someone I brought up earlier who you fought, Stipe Miocic, he was, a lot of people consider him the greatest, of, or if not one of the greatest, because Fedor and obviously one of the greatest heavyweights of all time, Stipe Miocic. Do you think it was, a, do you think he was deserving to get the opportunity to have a trilogy when he lost the belt? Or not a trilogy, a rematch with Francis when he had the belt? Because... DC got the opportunity to have the rematch with him, and they ended up having a trilogy fight. And if anyone you can argue was most deserving of getting a rematch with his accolades, it would be Stipe. What were your thoughts when it was kind of announced there'd be an interim title opportunity and Stipe wouldn't get the opportunity to fight next for the belt? Um, depends on how you how you look at it. If you're like, because it'd be like. Uh, if they were like, well, John Jones is going to come out of, you know, he's going to fight heavyweight. They'll give John Jones the belt before, you know, a chance for the belt before Stipe. And the only reason is because it's about selling tickets. Right. It's still entertainment. Like, there's not the, um, and I think that that could be the whole segue uh, for, you know, like for fighting. I mean, and then for DC and Stipe, the reason why is just because that was just to get it's more for dc to get the shot wasn't more for Stipe. does that make sense yeah definitely so it's kind of more of the if financial side of things yeah like anything. if d because dc beats Stipe, and then like it was like who else is there for uh dc to fight at the time so then we got to go with Stipe dc again yep and then oh he won so yeah, yeah, DC Steep A three. You know what I mean? It, I got I guess listening to it and thinking more thoroughly through it too is like Steep A got the opportunity to have the rematch when DC got the best of him first. Right. So then if it was the other way around, it would it'd be like sorry DC. Right. So then then you'd be giving Steep A a second opportunity of getting a rematch after yeah. losing the belt. I guess that makes sense. I guess that makes sense. But to your point too, uh, regardless of who wins this fight between Francis and Cyril. If John Jones wants in next, the UFC is going to give John Jones that opportunity. I could, I could totally, I could totally, you know, see him jump the line. Yeah. Well, I don't think he's going to fight at heavyweight on first unless it is for the belt. Uh, and then, and then if he loses, it's I'm not a heavyweight. <laughs> well, how, how do you think he will do though? I, I think, um, because it's he's been putting on a lot of weight, so it's it's. Um, Depends on how he's been carrying that weight. Like, I mean, because you have to like, carry that weight for a minute to go, oh, I'm a heavyweight. I mean, he probably already walked around like 210, 215, 220. But to walk around at like 250 is a bigger, that 30 pound. And to be able to move, I think he's faster than a lot of heavyweights, longer than a lot of heavyweights. He's like, because um, Francis is, you know, like super long, like compared to. Um, any other heavyweight, like even though they might be the same height, but Francis has like a reach that just is forever. He could be that boxing guy, that, you know, kind of like a um, uh, Fury. Yes. Yeah, you know how like just you know kind of just <laughs> leans back and be like you can have my legs. If we were doing uh, you know MMA, he'd be like already taken down, but he's like you can have my legs. I don't like I. 
they're gonna be close, but my arms are long. Right, right. And uh, t- speaking of Fury, there's a lot of things we can say on him, but one of them first being he's connected to a, a fight with Francis. He, if anything, was promo- has been promoting this fight, trying to fight Francis, a boxing match. Then he brought up, we'll do it in MMA gloves. If anything, he's bringing attention to it. And I think in the era we live in now, I probably brought up Jake Paul's name before. It's like anything could happen in combat sports. We brought up triad combat, boxers fighting MMA fighters. That's a, that's, that's a, a super fight that I'm sure a lot of people would love to tune in for. Only if he wins. Only if he wins. Because if he does it, you're like, ah, I don't want to fight that guy. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Deontay Wilder had everything until he lost in terms of all the appeal, you know, the hardest puncher of all time, you know, all that type of talk and undefeated. And then, you know, what happened with Fury, obviously the, the first fight was amazing where it went to a draw. And then the second and third fight, he kind of, you know, he got paid at least. But. Yeah, then they're like, ah, we're good. <laughs> Seen it once. <laughs> yeah. For sure. But isn't there a photo I saw on your Instagram? You, Tyson Fury, with, uh, and, with, and yeah, Nick, Nick Diaz? Yeah. When, um, so it's with that that group is – that's why it's fun to watch, you know, like because when you, when you kind of get – like, you know, go to all the other gyms, you get to, you know, hang and see how the, you know, other – I guess behind the curtain, you know, like the Wizard yeah. of Oz. So, I mean, that that's always cool. That's like when you go to Bones's, you know, and you're like, oh, look, there's Jake. You know, like it's just there's people at every gym that you're less like, oh, wow. And and then it's uh, that's one thing I'm knock on wood and blessed that, you know, I get to see all these different people and, and visit. So what were they doing there? That Was that was that here in Las Vegas? That was, that was, that was here in Vegas. Was that at Bones's gym or? No, that was um, over at uh, – one of the one of the other um I, I think it's uh who manages uh ty, like uh ty, top rank top i think it was the top, top rank, rank uh, gym. gym yeah i think that was around the time um it was probably before the Robbie Lawler fight that he recently just had or around that time of the it was way back yeah so what were they doing they're just having fun i can't imagine they were doing anything just you know kind I'm of just working out when not you know just like you know going to the gym just having a little fun of course, I can only imagine uh, what that would look like stylistically. Just work. <laughs> <laughs> well, after his last performance, do you want to see Nick Diaz fight again? Um, I think because Nick hates fighting, so it's one it's one of those things. Like sometimes you know you just fight just because you want to. Uh, you have to fight, and then sometimes you like to fight. Like for me, like. Nick is, is, I would say, kind of like me. Like, I'm not a, um, I don't like fighting or like that, you know, but I love competition. So it's a, there's a different type of vibe. And then um, when, because Nick loves competition, loves to, you know, like compete, but com- uh, fighting is a little bit because how the UFC promotes, you know what I mean? Like doing all the, publicity and trying to hype it up and like uh, like no i just want to compete i don't want to do all that crap yeah there's a lot more to being a fighter you know than just the competition standpoint once with some of these organizations only when you need to get paid hmm. if, if if you just if you want to be the lower end of the the spectrum you could just fight if you just want to show up and fight you could be that guy but you're not gonna make no money right and you want to make money because you can't do this forever that is true. When when do you think you know enough is enough? I I really don't know. I mean, I talked to Mike about it. Um, and Tyson. Yeah, and it's just one of those things. Like, you just, it's just in your your blood, and you just like you know. You, there's some days where you go, man, why do I even do this? And then there's other days where you're having a good good time, and it's the same week, and you're like, that's why I do it. You know, so for me, it's for me, it's uh, I'm doing it like for my my wife. I'm like, oh, we're out and, you know, and I'm like, I give her, you know, a little timeline. And then and then she's like, OK, cool. I'm like, OK. And I saw you teaching your son. You teach him a lot. I think I saw a video of him doing a single leg on Francis Naganu not too long ago as well. Yeah, no, Jackson, uh, Jackson, Jackson. loves to. um 
He's very competitive, and but right now he's doing. I I love him that he's doing uh, gymnastics. So. Oh, that's great. So it's good for body awareness. Very very good for body awareness, but especially the age when they're developing all the muscles and limbs too. I mean, it's get would, that dexterity. Would you let him follow in your footsteps? We we've kind of made that uh, where he's like, I want to be a fighter, or because he wants to be an army man. A fighter, um, and uh, what else? And a mechanic. So those are his three. And I'm like, I'm like, you don't want to be that guy. You don't want to be that guy. I'm like, I'm like, oh, he wants to do construction. I'm like, okay, I don't care if you, you could be a ge- uh, general contractor. You can be the guy that you know tells everybody else what what to do. But um, no, I, I, if I could have him not fight, I'd, I'd in a heartbeat, be like, nah. But at the same time, I'm blessed, and he's blessed that he can make those choices, right? Like, yeah. like kind of like, if he wants to be a fireman, I'm going to push him to be a fireman. If he wants to be this, I'm, you know, the, you know how when you start as a kid and everything, you could be anything you want. You want to be president, you could be president. Like, that's where we're at. And what age did you introduce him to fighting and he kind of realized that this is what my father does for a living? Uh, I think the first time he was actually in the gym was two weeks after he was born. Wow. wow. He was in, he Born was in, into this. He was, he, he, he was literally, um, my wife went, uh, took him to the gym. And we always made fun of, uh, and everybody's like, you brought a baby to a gym? We're like, we're just working on his immune system. <laughs> the younger they are, the more they're yeah. accustomed to it. It's in his blood. I mean, he's he's aware of it. This The very first fight was actually um, my fight against um, Matt Mitrione. He was only three weeks old. Wow. Wow. With the ear, ear piece on? Well, no, because he, he, he was a baby, so it was just stuffed. Uh, he was stuffed at the uh, in a bassinet or whatever. <laughs> what would you say has kind of been the most rewarding part of your journey, looking through everything? Uh, reward, I guess the most rewarding was is be able to meet different people, um, see different countries, um uh, and just be able to uh, share knowledge and take knowledge in. Like, that's kind of like, because I, I came from a kung fu background, you know, from like a, like a true martial artist, like to be able to share ideas and take ideas. I mean, when I first got into this, like the first time I ever traveled international was actually had nothing to do with fighting. It had to do with jiu-jitsu and doing Abu Dhabi, you know, like so like going to Brazil, like I was like, oh, this is cool. I'm getting paid to go to Brazil, you know. So that was like kind of the just um, just a different way to, you know, kind of see the world. Yeah, traveling. And different people. Yeah. Yeah, traveling's fun. I'm not a big travel. I don't really? like, I don't like, tra- like, because fighting, because I always like being corners. Traveling with as a corner is fun versus traveling as a fighter. I can see yeah. a lot of different things. So <laughs> you have to worry about getting in a cage and fighting someone, but yeah. then add all the other elements of passports and team, your team, making sure everything is. Yeah, I, I can imagine that's just added responsibilities that. Uh, I would, but I'd still rather be the corner. I'd rather be a cornerman than than the fighter because then the, as a fighter, you're. It doesn't matter where you're at. You're like, you know, it's like you're just focused. Yeah. That's why I like fighting. Like fighting in Vegas is like fighting. It's like going sparring. You're like, oh, oh, we got to be there at seven. Let's go. For sure, that's your home. Well, when you reflect on everything, what moment are you most proud of? Most uh, probably the probably winning the uh, IFL belt the very first time. That was like kind of like I guess my aha moment of like, oh, pretty good at this. You know, and then um, just after that, I think that one and then um, being sparring partners for, like, Chuck and, like, uh, Randy. Like, just, like, like being at the root of MMA before MMA was MMA. Right. That That's probably the best because I remember um, how long you've been in Vegas. Just uh, she's been here her Born whole life. Raised. I've okay. only been here for three years. Okay, so like for example, like I remember um, training with uh, BJ Penn 
and then afterwards he wanted to go to the beach you know the 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 nightclub and i'm like yeah. like you're not even 21. i wasn't even 21. he was like 19. i was like I'm like why do you want to go to the beach i just want to go to the beach i'm like eh. that like that like that's like so long ago and then i remember when dana didn't you know did the, dana was managing um uh, uh, grapplers for like grapplers quest and stuff like you know like it was just like so it's so funny to like where you see everybody is from now like yeah. they're, they're at the seed well what do you think of the evolution now and where it's become it it's it's crazy because i remember um uh, do you remember eric pele biggie yes yeah. um so i remember him fighting for the belt for uh king of the cage um on an indian reservation and i was like and then I remember just him going through it, and then they're like, "There's no money, man. They're, I'm doing this for fun. I just, I'd like, I'm not doing this to make any money. I'm doing this because I just love the sport." And I'm like, "Uh huh, uh huh." And then he's like, "And you see the fireworks? We just spent fifty thousand dollars for the fireworks day. You know, like, the, uh, like, and how much is he making? Oh, don't worry about that. But we, did you see the fireworks? The fireworks were awesome. I'm like." Oh, this I'm like, I don't know if I want anything to do with this business. <laughs> it's crazy, too, because even when you're on The Ultimate Fighter, I just remember looking at the, the scene when Kimbo Slice walked into the room and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And now you have a situation where kids are growing up, specializing, and being a mixed martial artist. Like, it's not the days when you were probably going through everything. Like, I got wrestling here. I got jujitsu here. I have boxing here. Everything is just centered around being a fighter. It's a, it's a lifestyle now. It's like... It's it's crazy to see the evolution of this sport in literally twenty five to twenty eight thirty years. No, it's it's crazy because uh, and then parents think uh, mixed martial arts is actual martial arts. It's not. It's it's a sport like you know it's like boxing. It's like saying, oh you got you know boxers have this coat like no the boxers are boxers you know and football players are football players baseball players are baseball players mixed martial arts are mixed martial arts you know they're MMA. Or in if uh, UFC does a very good branding, like I do that UFC stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy because a lot of people who don't know the sport, they just assume that all fighting is UFC. that's not yeah. boxing, just it's UFC. That, it's that UFC stuff. <laughs> you do that UFC. <laughs> yeah. And then when you say no, I do uh, MMA, it's like foreign to them. What the hell is MMA? Yeah. Uh -huh. It's like no, what? I do UFC stuff. So you're just hanging out with Chuck Liddell. He's out here filming some stuff and buddy years and Chuck's doing good. Yeah, Chuck's doing good, you know, like, you know, just plugging away. So it's it's always, you know, good to see, uh, you know, different guys that, you know, it's kind of like Randy, you know, just where you're like, uh, where everybody's kind of, you know, been, you're like, oh, you're doing well. And then there's the other guys where you're like, like. I remember you all the way at the top, and then you're all the way at the bottom, and then back at the top because it's a roller coaster ride, you know. Yeah, I I can only imagine. I can only imagine. Well, what advice would you give the next generation of kids who want to pursue this? There uh, depends on if you're doing it. Don't do this to make money. Do it because you love it. It's kind of it's it's kind of like why why do people go to college to get a job to make money. But why should you go to college? To learn. To learn. So that's all depends on why you go to college. Like if you're like, I need to go get a job. That's why I need to go to college. It has nothing to do with what I want to do or like to do or whatever. You know what I mean? Like I went to when I went to college, it's because I like to teach. That's I I just went to go learn how to teach, how to get paid to teach, and then, but then I found out later in life going. Oh, I just like teaching. It doesn't matter what I'm teaching. It doesn't have to be math, elementary school, you know, like it was just like jujitsu, boxing, kickbox. Like I just like teaching and just that aha moment of showing you something and you go, that's how you do it. Okay, that's cool. Not two plus two is four and go, ah, oh, that's how I had. But, you know, but some people just have to do this sport or feel like they have to do this sport because, you know, they might not love fighting, but they're just good at it. And it's the only thing they could do to make money. And they just don't have it within them to sit in a nine to five job. True. But it's it's one of those. If. If you want to do well in this sport, you have to love it. 
up to a certain degree. You have to love some type of aspect, like either from the learning part to the competition part. Like there's something that you have to do to go. I like that. Maybe not that, 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 or that, <laughs> but I like that part, and that that's enough to bring me th- or to get me through some of the, you know, I guess the mud. Who was your toughest opponent? Uh, I think toughest opponent ever. Um, and what's and what uh, organization? Any. I was, I was gonna. Overall, I was, I was, gonna, make, I was gonna make a joke and say it was Lorenzo. <laughs> but, <laughs> um, you know what? I think fighting wise, I think toughest opponent. Definitely, I would. I would probably throw out like maybe Junior. Junior, Junior is probably the the toughest, and I think that was because it depends on where you get him at the you know in his career. Right. Because I think I had him right before he. He went on the tear. I think I got him right after he knocked out uh, Verdum, Crow Cup, and then it was me. And then I remember that's when Brock was supposed to fight him. And then Brock hid and then couldn't fight, couldn't fight, couldn't fight. And then I think Junior went through like four more people and then finally and then beat uh, Kane. To get the belt after he fought like eight, eight or nine of the top top guys, and then Kane, and then Kane got a rematch. When I uh, asked you, or when I brought up earlier, Steve Bay's name and said one of the greatest of all time, you kind of gave me a look. So we got to get Big Country's I, ranking I would, of heavyweights. I, I would, I wouldn't put. I mean, Steve Bay as in. Because we're we're judging, because we're judging fighters, or we ju- we doing like, champ. I guess uh, if you're just doing, uh, I think I the, think everything. If you're counts. saying if you say MMA or you say in UFC, MMA. I want I want MMA, <laughs> greatest heavyweights or, MMA. Because I don't do that UFC stuff. I do MMA. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. No, oh, I know. <laughs> no, uh, like for Steve, Bay, Steve, Bay's, he's a very great athlete. And like great at you know MMA whatever, but he's not like for me. I'm a hardcore like fighter. Like I want to see someone fight. Want to see like a Mark Hunt, a Fedor, someone that's gonna take a fight next week. If you're like, hey, let's fight. Not a well. You see, my my big toe kind of hurts a little bit, so I can't. I can't. I got. I got. You know, I got to take six weeks off. You know, or eight weeks. You know, I got to get my full camp in. You know, and those are. Nothing against those guys, but those guys are, you know, I guess the smarter ones of the group, but they weren't, uh, they're not the fighters. They're not the ones that fans go, dude, I want to watch that guy fight. Those are the guys that are like, he's a fighter. He's, you know, he's good at what he does. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like the, the Justin Gaethje's of the world were like, I want to watch that guy fight. Yeah. You just like, I don't care win, lose. Like I'm, I got, I'm, that's my guy. It's like you're, you're old school Bears fan. The Bears, you know what I mean? You're like, I don't care. You know, I'm a Bears fan. See, look, look at this. <laughs> he it's, really it's, it's, that's true. It, 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 you're like, don't worry, it's a rebuilding season. Rebuilding season. <laughs> no, what the problem <laughs> is, they, they when it comes to rebuilding, they need new management. It's not just get a new GM, get a new coach. It's they need new management because from the top down, they're a mess. I hear what you're saying though at the heavyweights, but you still got to give us that. Your your heavyweights. I mean, this is. Roy Nelson's list. Yeah, this isn't country anybody list. else's. See, but there's not like a. For me, it's not a. Like who's the best? It's it's more like who I like to watch. Okay, like that's you know fair. what I mean. Okay, it's, that's fair. It'd be like you know the Fedors, the Big Nogs, the Crow Cops, uh, Mark. Like I'm all like you're pretty much school. you're like pretty much you just name like all the Pride guys, right? Because Pride guys just fight. It wasn't like I mean they didn't there wasn't like going. I don't know. I, I, it's amazing how fighters used to fight like twice or yeah. three times in the same night. That's that, just, I mean, it's wild. The first time I ever fought, I fought in the tournament. Like, I and, right. I, and then I was, it was $3,000 winner take all. And if you lost the first one, you didn't make any money. So second one, if you lost, you didn't make any money. You had to win the whole thing or you didn't make any money. That is crazy. But, and then also you had fees for your training partners or your, your coaches and travel. So you would lose money if you didn't win. 
you would in that in back in the day that that's how it used to i mean still how it, that's how it works is like you're like if you depends on how you pay people you, you do it because you love it see you got to start you got to start there yeah and if you're doing it for going ah oh, well well the pa- paperwork i got to do a little investment here you know like it doesn't quite make sense <laughs> yeah no that's uh those are all all factors in today's modern mma there's a lot of different things that are involved with uh, in terms of just more than just loving the sport. You, there's a lot of different factors. But brand building, promotion is, is a huge component of it now, I feel like. It's, you, you definitely have to have the, you have to at least understand marketing to a certain degree mm-hmm. if you want to get you know paid more than the like like a lot of, a lot of guys don't realize that you know like just to be in the UFC, like yes, you got from the bottom up, you got there's going to be that guy at the bottom regardless all the time because we got to still put on a show so we got to have that filler and then that's your chance to you know step up and fight and that's where you know but you got to have the ufc guys the you know the danas and you know where they they go that guy's awesome i want to i want to watch that guy if you get that guy then that's how you're going to get promoted and then if you get the fans to go, I want to see that guy, then that's how you're going to get promoted. If not, you're still going to be on the guy that's the undercard on, on Fight Pass or where it's not even on ESPN. <laughs> Who's your favorite fighter to watch right now? You know what? Right now, KJ's good. Um, I, like, I like watching Chandler. Chandler always puts it out there. That fight was incredible. Um. I'm a big fan of Nate. Nate Nate will always, you know, leave it out there. Um heavyweights, it's heavyweights is it's a tough one. Um because this matchup coming up is very interesting depending on how they approach it. Cuz if I think if Francis stays back, I think it's going to be a different fight cuz cuz normally he's not as uh he's a little bit more greedy. And then like, oh, I'm gonna get you. And Sriel is always the no. I'm I'm gonna play back. So it's curious if it's gonna be like a Francis and um, uh, Derek fight, right? Where, where they're like, I know you hit hard, I hit hard. So are we gonna fight or are we just gonna? Oh, dance? so we're talking about the most entertaining fight in uh, UFC heavyweight history, right there, Derek Lewis Francis Ngannou. <laughs> But that, but that's a good point. I think whoever imposes their will stylistically from the get go, it's going to answer a lot of questions. Yeah. Like Francis has to cut him off and shorten the cage, and if if Cyril is is creating space, but they're not fighting in the apex, right? And that was where Francis had his last victory, where he got the belt, yeah. was in the apex. You think so? You think obviously the longer this fight goes, the more it favors one of these guys over the other. Well, it because it really. It's real. I don't see any takedowns on yeah on this side. Mm-hmm. On Francis' side, Francis does takedowns. So it, it but is he going to? Because I don't know. Like sometimes you just get caught up in the like, oh, you punch me, I'm gonna punch you. You kick me, I'm gonna kick you. You know, like, and if you never wrestle, then it, it's like sometimes when you re- like wrestle with somebody and they go, oh, you just try to take me down, I'm gonna take you down. Like so, it just kind of so if. That kind of gets out of your your toolbox, and you're just like depends on how you focus, you know. And so that's why it's, I think it's very interesting. I think the first three rounds we're gonna we'll see where the fight goes. You know what I mean? If it doesn't, if first three three rounds are gonna be the dictation of the um, the fight. First three rounds, you think it's gonna go through three rounds? Okay. Well, it, I I have a I have a hunch if it go, if it goes he through. Has a hunch. <laughs> Some, you have a hunch we could see championship rounds. <laughs> I, I, you could definitely see championship rounds. All the fans that want to make a bet that's, like, watching this right now. Yeah, or... <laughs> there it is. I mean, that's that's a good hunch, too. My hunch is for the uh, Figueredo-Moreno fight, I think that is going to be an all-out brawl. I think they That are, one's a fun fight. That's a fun fight. But the little guys are always fun. Like, like they they have to be scrappies. I think because this is the third time these guys are fighting, and the first one was Davidson getting the majority draw and just keeping the bout, and then the second one with Moreno choking him out. I mean, I just think, I think we're just this is setting up for such a good recipe of like a 
five round war. Yeah, no, it, it's definitely I think uh, going to be entertaining at least because yeah. they've you've seen the whole kitchen sink at one time or another. So you're like, oh, how do I how do I get that kitchen sink again, but differently? You know what I mean? You're a wanted man. It's Grandma Terry. Your grandma? No. Not mine. Um, my, my wife's. <laughs> Earlier, you mentioned Nate Diaz. Do you think they're going to end up making Nate Diaz versus Dustin Poirier? I have no idea. Like, if. I think it's pretty much where Nate's, Nate's pretty, you know, he, he beats, uh, you know, does his own thing. So. If um, that's the fight that he wants, then they'll make that happen. It's just like, uh, who is Nate? They were trying to get Nate to fight. Uh, well, they talked about a lot of things. They talked about Nate and Hamza Chimaev at one point. Yeah, too. no, no. But the the only reason is because that was, but it didn't make any sense. It was just just to build him up, not like it wasn't a money fight. It was just like, yeah, yeah, we know you're 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 on your way. You don't want to be here, and we'll we'll go over here and try to. You know, build off your brand. Yeah, because it's interesting because anyone Nate fights, they're going to be elevated. Mm -hmm. Anyone yeah. Conor McGregor fights, they're going to be elevated. So it, it's it's interesting when fighters get to a point in their career where it's like, oh, I see why they want me to take this fight. I see why. Rather than from a competitive standpoint, what makes sense here, it kind of makes more sense. From yeah, no, the, bo the, the boxer comes out of you where you're like, uh, well, let me see. Yeah, the, these numbers don't match up. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Well, I don't want to leave Grandma Terry waiting, yeah. um, <laughs> but we really appreciate you coming on the Schmo Zone. I appreciate you having me. Final thoughts you'd like to leave the audience with, Big Country? Uh, you know what? Uh, I think um, this weekend's uh, heavyweight fight is going to be definitely a fight that whoever wins that will definitely, I think, hold it for uh, for a minute. Well, a little bit longer than like Stipe. Because I think Steve A actually held it the longest. Yeah. Do you have like a final prediction for that fight? Uh, you know what? Um, I don't like to do a lot of prediction, but since he's you know out of out of the extreme, I'm going to go with Francis. But in the championship rounds. You know what? In the, I could, like I said, the first three rounds. After the first three, then it's it's anybody's. Uh, I, I think it. Francis is the first three, and then Surreal would be the last if it makes it that championship far. Championship rounds would just because of uh, how fight, f just how he fights. Because it'd be like fighting Stipe. Stipe, Stipe is a five rounder. Like he, he's gonna wear you down, wear you down, wear you down. He's not actually gonna beat you up. He's not gonna fight you. He's gonna play tag and run, tag and run, tag and run. So it all depends on if Surreal goes in attacks and then they actually it we might get you know it might become a brawl and, and, and if it's one of those then it's going to be the most exciting heavyweight fight in history or it's going to be the Derek lewis francis fight where you're like ah. and then it'd be like whoever imposes their will who 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 comes closer and then the the judges go well did who did he take the belt from him did he not take the belt from him and then it all depends on if uh, there's some elbow grease, you know, and then with the judges. And then next thing you know, it could be an ugly fight like that and be like, it's real. <laughs> 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 you never know. I uh, That's the conspiracy theory in me. Got a lot of conspiracy yeah. theories. Hey, but all my conspiracy theories have always been right. Big country, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us. Episode 91 of the Schmozone podcast. We are out. Yeah.